Welcome to Sunday Worship at First Congregational Church in Essex. Whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We believe everyone is a unique and beloved child of God's own creating. Please join us this autumn when we hope to present regular worship in our sanctuary. Keep watching, though, in the meantime, as we share the good news of Jesus and the hopes of our community. Let's now listen to some wonderful music. The scripture reading today is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, greetings, and I'm glad you're here with us today. Uh, the reading today is from the book of Mark, which Mark rarely uh, offers uh, a, 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 a long explanation of what was going on in the scripture. Mark is sort of the cliff notes of the gospel, and that shows pretty much in what he says today in our reading. Uh, it's, it, I say this humorously because you can imagine the kind of things that were going on in the midst of this scripture that he doesn't even talk about. He, it doesn't seem to uh, be something that Mark is going to uh, take the time to detail. And uh, uh, let me explain uh, uh, about that. Um, when Jesus is being baptized, he comes up out of the water and this, all of a sudden this voice from heaven is speaking and <laughs> declaring him, you know, you are my son, uh, the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. Uh, and it says, and the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. I mean, you know, imagine him coming out of the water and then, you know, this is like a speed walk into the wilderness, all sopping wet. But then uh, immediately following that, the very next line, it says, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days doesn't tell us a word about what happened other than the fact that he was tempted by Satan and he was with wild beasts and angels waited on him and um, that's pretty much what we're told about that so we're given a lot of uh, leeway I guess for our own uh, uh, imaginations as to what might have occurred in the midst of that time it finishes though with him coming out of uh, the, the wilderness and, and declaring that the time is fulfilled and the, the kingdom of God has come near. And then he says the most important thing, repent, and believe in the good news. So that's our message today, repent and believe in the good news. So I guess Jesus had to go through some stuff. He had to go through temptation. 
much like you and I, have had to go through temptation in our lives. And we will continue to have to go through temptation. You know, in many ways, that's the reason why this is, isn't just like the magic pill, uh, that you, you take uh, religion or you take, you know, this story and all of a sudden everything's just fine because, you know, life continues on. And we have to uh, realize that we're going to be challenged again and again and again that just because uh, perhaps we found relief or insight uh, into something that used to really bother us or uh, into something that we have done that made life difficult and we've been able to... Um, correct, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden yet another thing will come along. And so this is why, of course, uh, we return again and again. Uh, I, I can see why perhaps that, that kind of uh, understanding might not be all that attractive to people and people don't necessarily think that um, the church is valuable uh, for them, especially uh, more uh, uh, unchurched people, uh, younger people, people who have never been given the opportunity to be a bar, part of the community. Uh, I understand, uh, you know, because in so much of, of the rest of our lives, we're, we seem to be uh, marketed uh, these uh, things that are supposed to uh, fix things for us. You know, do this and everything will be fine after that. Well, you, if we really look at those kind of things, we, we really know that the, that's not true that just like in the faithful life, uh, we something gets better, and then all of a sudden later on something else comes along, and we have to deal with it then. Uh, the same thing goes then for life outside of a spiritual life or a religious life or a church life, whatever. And so um, uh, it's just, it, the, the deal is, is that in the outside of the church element, um, it's just another opportunity to be sold a new solution is really what it's about. And we respond to that. Um, we work hard in our daily life, in our jobs. Uh, we've gotten to the point in our uh, economy where two people have to work in order to make a, a household usually uh, do okay. And it's so that we can obtain those things which are supposed to make our lives better. And um, the, the faithful way, though, is is a way to deal with our lives um, without having to really purchase uh, things, but instead give things away. It's, it's an antithesis to the marketing uh, ploy of most companies uh, that, you know, faith, religion, honestly, um, it, it really is uh, the opposite of the market. Uh, going into or dealing with life problems, uh, going into... Uh, uh, dealing with the world as a whole, uh, faith uh, teaches us that we are to in engage, especially in the Christian faith, uh, engage with these things, you know, to be tempted, to be uh, uh, dealt with by uh, beasts, <laughs> you know, but allow then the angels to wait on us and um, to come through and to, uh, in many ways, uh, find a way to, especially when we have been wrong in the whole midst of all of that stuff, repent and to believe in the good news that we're, that things are going to be better and that they can be better. And they do become better. But instead of moving on to the next thing and uh, then having to purchase the next remedy or to purchase the next thing that's going to make life better, uh, God... Uh, and, and Jesus. Actually, they say, well, we're not going to make you buy something. What we, we really want you to do is we want you to, to give something away. And that is the opportunity to enter into this life where you don't have to purchase things, where you are giving away, really, the keys to the kingdom, to, the, the answers to uh, everything, uh, and that it costs nothing. It, 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 um, it, it simply is uh, uh, turning over uh, to the next person, perhaps the secret to uh, a good life, and that is uh, uh, coming true to yourself, coming true to one another, um, and being a, a faithful and generous and kind person. And that's what the church is here for. It's not here to sell you something. 
It is here to give something away. And then we are taught to give something away as well. And that is the spiritual life. So I pray that if you are in the midst of a, a wilderness, and you know, this COVID thing is very much a wilderness, uh, and the temptations to try different things or, or not stay the course, the temptations to want to say, well, I'm tired of this and give up uh, doing the right thing. Um, I know those temptations are there, but I want you to, to stay safe, you know, to wear your mask, to wash your hands, to keep distant, to uh, get that vaccine when you can and follow up with the second dose. And, uh, and, and then you come uh, out and all of us will uh, arrive at the other side together. Uh, I uh, wish you the best. I hope for you the most. And uh, I find it a privilege to be able to share with you. And I'm grateful that you were here with me here today. Uh, may God's blessing be upon your day. And I am so very grateful for your presence. Bless you. And I ask, my friends, that you ask a blessing for me. Love. Let us pray. Cleansing God, we have each received the baptism of water, and we seek from you a deeper baptism with each special moment with you. Cleanse us, making us new as you were made new through the trials in the desert. Protect us from the evils of temptation, the seeming ease of deceit, and the cheap promise of fast riches. May our days be serene because we have agreed to walk in your ways and in your love, this day and forevermore. Amen. now a few announcements for our community. We hope you continue to wear your masks and to keep an appropriate social distance from others throughout this pandemic. The sooner we can defeat it, the sooner we get to worship in person again. We are feeding families in the Region 4 School District again this week, so thank you everyone for your donations. Another meal will be offered in several weeks during the spring. We will need your financial assistance again for that meal. Each meal costs $30 and feeds a family of six. So please help out if you can. In addition to that, Reverend Ken continues to assist families who contact him for emergency grocery monies. Contributing to the Pastoral Discretionary Fund assists in this mission. Please consider making a contribution to this fund as there continues to be a great need in our community. We are offering a drive through communion at the church on Sunday, March 7th, starting at 11 a.m. If you have not yet signed up to be a part of that and would like to receive communion, please call the church office. We hope to see you there. Our book group is studying the book Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. We meet by Zoom on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Please join us. And please come be a part of Sunday Morning Coffee Hour. It's a great opportunity to reconnect with each other. We meet at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday by Zoom at our regular Zoom address. And don't forget... Wednesday nights at 7.30 for prayers. We meet for 15 minutes on the special Zoom address just for that. If you have any prayers you'd like to present, please join us at that time or send your prayers ahead of time directly to Ken. 
And our final announcement, calling all former and new readers and all of you closet thespians out there, if you would like to be a reader during our worship, please reach out to Reverend Ken as soon as possible. We would love to include you. So that's it for announcements for today. Thank you for being here and have a wonderful day.